and thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. So a bit of a, a, an interesting or different topic uh, this time uh, in terms of locations and, and how you actually go about setting the location that you're going to build your HMO portfolio. Um, so we've, we've been looking at ideas and, and ways that we can provide more content for people and, and our community and uh, things that pe we know people will find of interest as well. And we thought this was quite a, a good one, not just kind of highlighting a couple of areas that we've got some key stats on, but also uh, things to look at and, and take into account when looking at your kind of key areas. Um, so we're going to jump into the presentation. Um, my name is Stephen Moss. I'm the Managing Director of Sourced. I have founded and run multiple businesses in a number of different sectors, um, been involved in property investment for 20 years, which makes me feel really old. Um, I've dealt with properties from 55,000 up to 150 million. So if anybody's watched any of our, our previous webinars before, you'll know that we talk about our, our biggest flagship development in Manchester. Um, we've also got developments all over the UK from Scotland uh, down to Bournemouth. So a, a real variety of investment opportunities and, uh, and obviously HMO forms part of that investment strategy. I've worked in lots of different, uh, or worked with lots of different strategies. So, and I've kind of seen them change over the years. So it, it's different things from uh, HMOs and how they first started, uh, where everything was kind of shared facilities and it was ultimately just a room that you paid for uh, and how that's kind of developed into the, the HMO model that we know and we utilize now. I'm also very fortunate to be the founder of Sourced. So, uh, a company that I absolutely love. Uh, I'm going to shout out a little bit more and give you a bit more information about us and what we do as a business. Uh, and yeah, very passionate about property as well. So uh, one of the things that I love about property the most is that you can utilize your imagination. So it's very rare to come across uh, an opportunity that you can't apply a unique structure or strategy or some kind of grand master plan of what you can do with that property and how you can work it. Um, and that's one of the really key things and exciting things about property. A little bit of an overview of Sourced, uh, the business. So I thought it'd be good to kind of give you a bit of a, an insight into where we are uh, as a business and you know, why am I qualified to sit here and talk to you about HMOs and how we approach it. Um, so we started off in January 2017. We launched our franchise model in September 17. We became FCA regulated in August 2018. By, two, by October 2018, we'd hit 50 franchisees, so quite, quite good growth. February 2019, we launched our largest development in Manchester, £150 million. Pound. January 2020, we were registered for ICE and pension funding. Um, October 2020, we introduced our care team, so in, in the care sector, identifying properties for long-term leases and good returns. November 2020, we hit 100 franchisees. And then the summer, we've got this summer, we've got our brand new phone app, which we've been working on uh, coming live, which we're, we're really excited about launching. So a little bit of a snapshot of the business itself. Um, generally speaking, if, if anybody's come across us, you, you'll probably know us through one of the, the five sections. So we've got source property, where we identify and we sell properties. So to give you an insight in terms of what we do there, um, we analyze over 300 uh, property deals a week. And we're selling on average about 50 property deals a week as well. Capital is our peer-to-peer -peer lending platform. So where we raise money and we, we pass that on to, uh, to investors, the returns. Uh, developments is, is what we manage our developments under. Um, the care sector I touched on earlier. So working in the care community and identifying properties for those uh, in need. And then the franchise side as well. So uh, we've got a, a fantastic franchise network of about 150 franchisees across the UK. Um, all identifying good investment opportunities and working together within these sort of five uh, key divisions of the business um, and obviously looking to grow their portfolios uh, and their own business as well. So the kind of key tagline of, the, of this, uh, this webinar today is where should I purchase HMOs? So not just, we're not just looking at key areas, but we're also looking at what are the key drivers to make those decisions and what's behind it. What should you be looking at? Um, to know that if this is the right area for you and what the potential return is on that area as well. So we're going to start off looking at, um, you know, what makes a location a gold mine. Um, you know, you've probably heard this phrase in lots of trading events before or any webinars you've, you've taken part on, you know, the gold mine area. Um, and, I th and I think it's really, I think it's, it's quite well set, to be fair. It, it can be a gold mine area if you can find the right location. Um, 
it can very, very quickly increase prices. Um, I know one such gold mine that, that happened um, probably about five years ago now where um, when HS2 was a, a big kind of announcement and, and future breakthrough, um, there were locations where HS2 was, was plotted and predicted that this infrastructure is going to come into place and lots of people brought, bought houses around there to see those increase in value uh, fairly quickly. Unfortunately, I think this took a lot longer than we all expected, and you know, given the current climate as well. Um, but yeah, it's identifying that gold mine and what are the key factors behind that that are going to drive the gold mine and going to give you um, your goal ultimately. Before selecting your gold mine, before selecting the, the area that you're going to invest in, you're going to build up this portfolio, the key points that we need to look at and we need to consider. And this, this is all about kind of sitting down, spending a little bit of time on your own, looking at your plan, looking at where you are now, and the things that you need to take into account when selecting it. The first thing is to start off with the end game. And I'm sure you've heard lots of people talk about this when they're looking at the businesses, where do we want to be in five years? And well, let's work that backwards. And that's exactly what we've done with our business. And I know hundreds and hundreds of other people do the same approach. It's important to do the same thing when investing in property. And one of the messages we, we constantly pump out, I mean, literally before this call, uh, the meeting I had with the, uh, two gents uh, was, was the same sort of message in terms of, you know, have a plan, have a, a goal at the end, where do we want to be? And then let's work that plan backwards and then make sure we execute it correctly. So the, the first question you need to ask yourself in terms of uh, HMOs, uh, you know, if you're looking to build a HMO portfolio and make sure, you know, we've already decided that it's the right approach and it's the right investment for you. It's knowing and understanding what's the end game in terms of, is it capital growth? Or is it rental turn, rental yield? Is it return? Is it cash coming into you? Now, this might change as you go through the process. You might start off and think, right, okay, the key thing for me right now is to generate an income every month. So um, quite often when we're talking to HMO partners, a lot of people have £5,000 in their mind to say, look, I'd really like to get £5,000 a month net after everything's paid and then be in a position to say, right, okay, what's going to change? Am I going to give up work? Am I going to um, go into property full time? Am I going to start buying buy to lets? The gents I spoke to earlier, their, their view potentially was that, you know, let's build up this pot and then let, let's then focus on buying properties closer to home um, and have the portfolio closer to home. Because again, it comes down to the fact that this is a business. You need to treat this as a business and say, look, HMOs initially could be anywhere in the UK. As long as the structure's in place, so you've got somebody locally to look after it, We've got a good management agent in place and it's a good property in terms of there's not lots of work and snags going to be needed throughout the time. It's not run down, et cetera. Then it's about looking at it a business, as a business and a return and having that goal and breaking the goal down as well. So ultimately your end goal might be to have £20,000 a month coming in, which is fine. Work that backwards then to say, right, let's hit the first milestone. Let's get to 5000 Then let's look at how we change it, how we tweak it, and how we constantly improve that plan. So the first one is capital growth and or rental yield. Now, capital growth, this when, when we're speaking to partners, quite often this is more when people are looking at pensions. So um, you might be in a full-time, uh, you might be full-time employed, you might do your job, got no issues or problems, got no uh, desire to go into property full-time. However, you're looking at this as, well, if I can build this as a pension, ultimately my capital growth, um, and that's the key driver for yourself. So it's, it's weighing up those options. Capital growth, what we're looking for, it's a different strategy, it's a different approach. We're looking for areas that are due to regenerate, so regeneration. Um, and we talked uh, a moment ago about the infrastructure, the likes of HS2. Looking for places that have plans for new work, so any hospital investment, any college, university, um, doing your research and your due, due diligence. It doesn't have to take lot, lots and lots of time, but key things, so speaking to key uh, MPs, local MPs, if you've got areas in mind, find out what regeneration is, is due to happen. Now, we've done some of that for you. So throughout this presentation, we're going to mention some of the key points and key areas that have shown this and have experienced this and have potential for this as well. So properties in Glasgow, Cardiff and Leicester have experienced impressive capital growth within the past five years. Landlords in, in Nottingham have also seen their investments raised by 10.5% of the last couple of years. So some key areas there where you can still find property at good prices, reasonable entry points, 
good returns, but they've got those capital growth points. And then look at the infrastructure that's been put into them. So what's actually happening around Glasgow? What's happening around Cardiff? Some people will approach it and say, well, actually, these areas are too expensive for me. But what's on the surrounding areas? Because you generally find that you have this ripple effect. So if a big infrastructure take place, takes place in Leicester, surrounding areas will then receive and benefit from that as well. So it's important to, to note that. Manchester as well has fared quite well. I mean, it's had a 10.76% growth um, over the last couple of years. It, it's done particularly well over the last five years, Manchester. Um, quite often the likes of Manchester and Birmingham um, mirror growth in London. Yet we've noticed over the last eight years that this has started to change and they've started to have their own growth uh, spikes and control. Um, and again, this is driven by infrastructure. So the likes of the, the additional trams, the additional um, conversions and, and uh, infrastructure that's going into Manchester has helped fuel that. And, and they've got a, a real plan in terms of over the next 10 years, how many sort of homes they're going to introduce, how, you know, what infrastructure is going to back that up. And this drives these capital growth and the, the key areas for you that you need to take into account. Rent Lincoln, a little bit different, I suppose, a little bit, little bit of a, a different approach. And I, I know some people probably sat there thinking, well, I'd like both. Um, ultimately, everybody does. Everybody wants great rental income um, with the, the returns from capital growth as well. It, and if, if that's the situation that you're, you're sat in and you're thinking, well, you know, I like both, it's more of a compromise. You're not going to get the absolute maximum from both, but ultimately you're find, trying to find something in the middle. If you were looking down the rental income side, so looking for properties with high yields. So right now we know that HMOs, and if we look across our portfolio of HMOs and our, our network, we know HMOs in cities such as Liverpool, Leeds and Glasgow are doing particularly well. That's a key point there that I think is really important to make note of. The fact that we know that there's high yield properties, high yield HMOs in Glasgow. We also know that capital growth in Glasgow of the past um, five years has been very high. So that's a really good place that you potentially look at to hit both of those targets. Again, very similar in big towns and, and cities as well. Manchester, Sheffield, Nottingham aren't too far, far behind. So um, surprisingly, Manchester really, because the growth that they've had, um, yet they've managed to maintain quite strong and quite good yields. We have seen some, uh, some really impressive returns on the HMOs, particularly when you're entering the sort of more professional um, and, uh, and luxury type of HMOs. Property type is another key factor that you need to address, you need to think about. Quite often when we look at HMOs and potential conversions, um, people look at big houses, people look at, you know, we, we've got here a five bed detached and we want to turn it into an eight bed HMO. There are lots and lots of um, options and, and ways that you can approach this. What we've found from our experience is actually the properties that give the better returns are the semi-detached and the terrace properties. So typically three or four bedrooms, and they're ideal for HMOs because they can be converted to four, five or six bedroom HMOs. We find that occupancy levels are typically a little bit higher because you've not got as many tenants to manage. And we also find the return based on the purchase price to be really exciting as well. HMOs in Liverpool beat those in Liverpool. So you can actually get to 3.6 times more of your money in the northern cities for a terraced home. So that's in terms of return. Um, so that's, that's quite, you know, it's quite a lot of money when you consider um, that there's always been this kind of divide of north and south and, and investors in particular, not sure if they want to cross that line and where they want to invest yet. We can now start to evidence actually over the last five years, look at the return and the difference that people are getting by investing into the northern towns and the northern cities. Um, particularly 3.6 on a terraced house is, is really, really impressive. We've also got some other rates as well to confirm. So Glasgow, again, really good return rate. So 3.6, 3.7%, sorry, leads a little bit lower, 3.4. Again, compared to London, um, really good returns. Why? Why are we getting such higher returns? I think it's quite obvious to, to a lot of people, to be fair, the fact that you know, ultimately um, houses are cheaper. You know, the, the, uh, the buying a property in the first place Um Typically, you'll find that uh, for semi-detached houses, it's a little bit lower because, again, it comes down to the fact that the purchase prices uh, are a little bit, little bit lower. I see a question has just popped up. Um, 
so yeah, so sorry, uh, Darren. So really good question there. Is there a handout of notes? So Darren, this webinar is recorded and we'll send you a copy of the recording after this as well. Uh, so you won't miss out on any of that. Um, cool. Types of property, types of tenants as well. So um, a lot of people kind of flooded the market uh, probably about 10 years ago, eight years ago, in terms of the student tenants um, and wanted to invest into students. What we're finding now is actually quite a lot of universities are now starting to build their own accommodation. That's not to say that student tenants have stopped. So it's not to say that it's, it's a market that's not dead. That, that's it's completely untrue. There are a lot of landlords that do really well out of student um, tenants, uh, student lets typically get uh, a really good return from their HMOs as well. What we're, what we're saying and highlighting here is, look, just be aware. There are locations we're aware of, ones such like Coventry, where universities are actually starting to invest into their own properties um, and they're putting them forward to the tenants first. So just keep that in mind and make sure you find out what the investment plan is for any university uh, local to, to where you're looking to invest for student tenants. Other types of, stu other types of tenants, um, we've got um, young professionals. So this is something that's continuing to grow and we've seen this grow and grow and grow. Um, it, it was kind of a fad initially where people, uh, young professionals thought, yep, yeah, great, fantastic uh, HMO. And we also believe this is the kind of driver be behind why HMOs have started to change, why people wanted more ensuite facilities, you know, creating more of a community, um, that little bit better quality almost from, uh, from your typical traditional, should we say, HMO. Um, so it, it's a really good way um, of looking at it. But yeah, young professionals, young professionals, when I first started dealing with HMOs, used to speak to people about, you know, what, what's your target tenant and what you're ultimately looking to achieve. And, and young professionals was this kind of word that was thrown around and no one either knew really what it meant or knew how to attract them or, or knew if that was a market. But I think as time's gone, gone by, we're finding that ultimately there's a, there's a real need for this and it's certainly continuing to grow and grow. Another tenant type, one that I touched on earlier, the luxury accommodation. So this is certainly something that that's starting to step, um, you know, step out in cities in particular uh, and large towns. You know, what we're finding here is it's not just about the accommodation. Um, it's also about the additional services, the, the space, the support, the, uh, you know, the additional touches that you can put into the HMO. Um, and we're finding that this market is really booming as well. Um, grown very, very quickly over the last couple of years. Um, I know some landlords personally that have been in it for, for a little bit longer and done very well out of it. Um, but now we're finding a lot of people are actually pitching their properties to this sector and finding that, you, you know what, this this is a huge, huge opportunity. Um, and it's just the little things. It's making sure that you know, you've gone above and beyond. You've, you've slightly increased the budget for the refurbishment. You've added things like the additional feature walls. You've thought it through in terms of actually, if you were to live in the property, how would it be presented and how would it be put forward? And again, one of the key drivers behind this, this whole, uh, the whole point of this webinar is ultimately we're looking at, you know, what areas are we going to invest in? Now, if you, you had an area initially that you thought, you know what, let, let's talk about Coventry because it's a really, really good example in my eyes. Um, Coventry has got great growth potential. It gives good yields. So you could have looked at that as you could have looked at that and thought, you know what, great growth potential, university, uh, good yields, not too far from London, Birmingham. Uh, good infrastructure um, and then had a focus on you know the university the, the student type but then if you've gone down the road and you've bought a property and then found out actually you're competing against the university you've not thought your plan through enough and that that's why we're highlighting these points to say look at the tenant type do your research find out who's competing against you you know who who else is marketing in this sector and who's doing well with it affordability is another key point you need to look at when choosing the area Often there can be mistakes made by people attracted to the cheapest. And that could be for a number of reasons. It could be simply that, you know, you, you've only got so much money that you can put down as a mortgage deposit. It could be that you're attracted um, to the fact that the tenant's income, you know, making sure that if you're going to go down the luxury route, uh, it's affordability, not just for you, but for the tenant, is that going to fit in? Are you going to buy a property which um, you're going to, kit out you're going to put to another level you're going to spend a little bit more on doing everything right but you're not able to achieve, to achieve those rents because that type of tenant and their affordability isn't a place in the area um, there's lots and lots of websites that you can go to, to to look at affordability levels 
Uh, I'm going to show you one very shortly as well, so you can check that out. Stress test. So again, not just from your side, but from the tenant side, making sure that, okay, if, if we have a void or if we have, um, you know, tenants that can't quite pay this level, you know, how does this affect us for buying properties in this area? How does it affect our plan? Because ultimately everything's got to come back to this plan and what you're looking to achieve and how you're going to grow it to get to that five, £10,000 per month income. Another one in terms of affordability. So some of our research has brought up Hull. So if any of our uh, any of you guys listening now uh, will be aware that we've purchased a property in Hull. And this was based on some of the research that we carried out. So we purchased a, a commercial unit and we've converted it into 12 units. Um, it's known as a uh, best city to invest in HMOs. Properties inexpensive to buy compared to other cities. You can get a very large semi-detached property for less than and £250,000. So very sort of traditional uh, semi-touch for that. So big, high ceilings, big rooms, ideal for your sort of HMO conversion. We've also got um, Sheffield, Liverpool and Nottingham, relatively cheap compared to local cities, towns, etc. cetera. Um, and according to Zoopla, key areas as well. Um, when you look at the, the square foot price, um, and that's really what you want to be applying for your HMO conversions. Um, these, are, these are key areas that you can take so yeah, we know we can uh, we can know we can uh, identify good ones. You can expect to buy an average semi-detached house for less than three hundred thousand pounds as well in cities such as Manchester, Newcastle, and Plymouth. That's probably not going to be right in the city centre. In reality, it's probably going to be just you know a little bit further out. But some of these places, which are a little bit further out, because these cities have the infrastructure, it doesn't matter too much. You know, people don't mind if they have to get the, the train, um, and it's a, a ten-minute train, five-minute train. Um, things like that, that that really drive these HMOs. Quite often as well with good quality HMOs, you'll find that people are willing to go a little bit further on the tube or the train um, because ultimately they like the fact that they're a little bit further out, it's a little bit quieter, it's a bit more rural, um, it's nice at weekends and, and things like that. And particularly what we found, the change that we've had over the last 12 months with COVID, people are spending more time uh, in properties so by stepping up, um, you would have seen in the slide previously about the, um, you know, the, the actual, uh, the, the luxury types, you know, we put in there about space because that's something that we found with a lot of people where actually if we're able to fit into the HMO room, a little bit of working space or uh, more communal areas so they could do a little bit of work from home, we found that to be hugely popular with people working more and more from home. Your own resources. So this is something, again, that should be applied to your plan. You know, what support do you have around you? So um, if you've got queries, questions, if it's to do with legislation, who can help you there? If it's to do with planning or structure or anything along those lines, look at your resources. Who's there to support you? Your time. So one of the, the, the key reasons that we started HMO uh, Partner is because ultimately we were growing on our network side of the franchise and it's grown very, very quickly, very well. Um, and what we found is people would come into us to say, look, I've got a full-time job. I'm really happy with what I do, but ultimately um, I'd like to build a property portfolio alongside this, give me a good return. I just don't have the time to invest into it. What resources do you have with your time? Finding the properties can be the most time consuming part. So it's important that you address that. What capital do you have to invest? So ultimately you will all have seen lots of videos online, YouTube, et cetera, say, look, you can buy a HMO, you can buy a property, you can convert it to a HMO, refinance it and pull all your money out of it. Now it, it is true. It's not something that people are um, you know, lying about, but it's really important and really, you know, it, it's, it's really important to take it on that it doesn't happen with every property. Our statistics shows one in 15 properties you can do that with. So what that means is that when you refinance it, potentially you're going to leave capital in the deal. So just, you know, again, what capital do you have? Because that's going to um, help either increase and speed up the plan or reduce and obviously slow down the plan, depending on how many properties you're looking to get into the plan. We typically work on three to four HMO properties. We'll give you about £5,000 per month after everything's been paid. So capital is really important. Experience as well. So, you know, experience is something that, Taking on a HMO project is really daunting, let's be honest. It's not like a, a buy-to-let where you know you've got one family going in, it's quite straightforward, or a terrace property. You're juggling multiple tenants. Um, it can be, you've also got the legislation, you've also got the, 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 some of the HMOs that I've been to where they're selling the HMO because they're not 
getting the returns they expected. And very, you know, we, we've got one we use as an example in our, our presentation where um, it was a nine bedroom HMO. Now, we took the HMO on because we converted it to a 12 bedroom HMO. And it was just simply down to the fact that the layout was wrong. You know, it, it was something so easy to say, well, actually, from our experience, we can step into this, change the layout, put a little bit of investment into it. Now, suddenly, that's netting over £30,000 per annum um, in uh, income from the, from the rental. So it's just about having that experience and, and utilising it to get the best from, from your investment and from your time. Infrastructure, this is one that I will bang on about forever, guys. So, you know, this is something for me, if you particularly we're looking at the capital growth, you know, if you're looking at capital growth, infrastructure is where you'll make your money. So making sure that you're aware of what's going on. It may mean, you know, listening to local council meetings or understanding what investment's happening. I'll give you a, a really good example, um, uh, again, of a location. So um, I'm ba we're based in Warrington uh, head office, um, just near Liverpool and Manchester. Um, now, we Warrington went to become a city um, probably about 10 years ago now, actually. Um, and it didn't get didn't get city, citizenship. That's the word. Um, and the reason for that is that it didn't have a cathedral. Now, there's only one other way you can become a city if you don't have a cathedral, and that's through population. So if your population hits a certain level, you can become a city then. Um, and Warrington have been on a drive now to grow that population, and they're getting very very close to the stage where actually, when it becomes a city, house prices have historically shown us that when a town becomes a city they will receive more funding from the government and therefore house prices increase as well. So that's an infrastructure change that will make a big difference to house prices in the area. It's, it's knowing and understanding the areas like that. Some of the tools to help you um, when looking at HMOs and looking at uh, the gold mine key areas. So one of the tools that we use is Land Insight. If you get the opportunity to go along, have a look at Land Insight. Um, I'm sure if you speak to them, they'll give you a uh, trial period to have a look and uh, play with it. It's a fantastic tool for identifying um, areas, um, buildings, um, identifying the owners, um, lots and lots of really good information on there. Another one that I mentioned earlier, um, which I, I touched on, was property data. Um, again, with this, with property data, you can set up a free trial. Um, it's quite inexpensive anyway. It's about £7 a month, I think. Um, but this is such a powerful tool, particularly for the HMO section. You can search for areas. Um, it will give you room rates for HMOs, whether it's on suite or bed. It gives you so much information about yields, returns, um, you know, things that you can help you identify those key uh, investment areas. And you know, they'll save you a lot of time and a lot of energy just by clicking in key areas that, you, that interest you uh, and getting all the research together. And you can you can actually export it out as well, so you can look at it in different formats. Just to so I know people digest in different ways. Getting it right, obviously, lots of examples of getting it right. Um, I threw this young man into the uh, into the mix uh, of the presentation because I did a presentation with him not long ago, and um, I think he's a great champion for HMOs. So, uh, Naraj, if you've not listened to the podcast that we did uh, a couple of weeks ago, then uh, you know I'd urge you to, to go on because we we focused on Naraj's business, looking at um, you know what he's done, how he's achieved it, uh, how his approach has been. You know what what he does in terms of management over a hundred. Well, he owns over one hundred ninety five rooms, which is absolutely fantastic. You know, we talk about uh, focusing, and finding an area, focusing, and a strategy, and all these key points that we've just been through. This is what's been applied to Naraj's business plan. You know, he's focused on one area in Manchester after doing his research, his due diligence. He's focused his strategy on the luxury sector. You know, and because he's followed this plan and the types of properties that he's invested into as well, in 2020 throughout last year, he had just three empty rooms across his whole portfolio, which is, which is amazing, really. Um, so and it, it's just following this plan and these key points of getting yourself set up, having that goal in place, the types of properties that you're interested in, the location of properties, the research, the strategy you're going to follow, the types of tenants you're going to go for, all those key points that we've touched on earlier. And executing, and I think this is a really good example of how it can be executed um, to, to a high level. How can we help you as sourced? So obviously, um, you know, we, we're presenting this today from sourced um, HMO partner. So giving you a little bit more information about HMO partner. So we provide HMO training, step-by-step -step support. So we're not a training company. We don't just focus on training because 
we believe in our, our kind of ethos throughout our whole business is look, training is part of what you'll do to be successful with this. There's other resources that you're going to need. One of the key ones is support. You know, it's great to learn about something in a training environment or training room, but when you leave it and you actually come up against something in real life, you need to be able to pick the phone up and speak to somebody who's been through it and, and discuss that. Working with proven strategies, handpicking HMO deals. So we've got, we're very uniquely set where we've got this fantastic network of franchisees across the UK, identifying um, investment opportunities. We provide them to our HMO partners 24 hours before we sell them through our property service. So you can handpick the deals that you're looking to purchase. And we also provide funding to our partners as well. So it's a way that you can actually take on more properties, more opportunities. What sort of returns can you expect from the HROs and, and what do our guys achieve? So typically 10 to 15% return per annum, 30% return plus on any capital that you've left in the opportunity, £50,000 to £150,000 per uh, annum income. Um, and we've also got as well 15 to £40,000 property profit per property. So you know, quite quite good figures, let's be honest. And, and nothing that's kind of there that people think, well, you know, how is that possible or what's happening with this? Um, you know, it, it's all black and white. We document everything. You can see on our social media channels the projects that we're doing and, and how they work. Um, in terms of how we work, so very straightforward. Our franchise network find opportunities. They crunch the numbers. They pass these over to our head office to review. If HQ say they're great, they feed that back to the sources. They'll add a sourcing fee, which is then passed over to our marketing team. They present them to the partners. Partners have the opportunity to accept or reject the property. If they accept it and want funding, we can put a funding call in place as well to help them. Training is one of the key points I mentioned earlier. It's only part of the jigsaw. So we offer training days every four months repeated. So you can come on the same course as many times as you like. You can come and learn about what a HMO is, how to source them, uh, how to structure and fund the deals, lettings and occupancy, planning, refurbishment and conversion as well. So covering all the key points, but more importantly on these courses, you're meeting people that are doing the same thing as you. You're meeting the mentors, you're meeting the training team and you're getting a lot of information to go away then and, uh, and execute. Support I mentioned, so we, we build a bespoke plan taking into account the points we've discussed today and we build it around yourself then to implement. And we follow this up then with accountability, mentoring, making sure we're on track for the plan, making sure we're we're hitting the points we need to be hitting uh, to grow the business. Our franchise package is £12,500 plus VAT. And that means that you become part of the brand, the support, the experience, um, unique funding and uh, ongoing mentoring program as well. We also have a, mentor, uh, a management fee of £200 per month and a franchise fee of 5% of gross rental, rental income. And this covers all the tenant support, off-market HMOs, email, phone, video support, CRM system, training, access to funding, dedicated mentor, resources, and legal documents as well. We have set it up so that, you know, it's important that you understand that not every investment you're going to be able to pull out all your money. I mentioned earlier that one in 15 you can do this with in our stats. So this means that you have to have some capital to invest. Now, on this basis, if you want to buy properties, uh, HMO properties in the north, it's about £100,000. You don't have to have that money all in one go. It can be spread out over the plan depending on when you're looking to buy properties and how many you're looking to purchase. If it's the Midlands, it's £200,000 or London, it's £300,000. But we will sit with you, spend time and obviously put this plan together to make sure it works for you. We work on the basis that we make money when you make money. So it's all driven around you, the franchisee. I hope I've provided some, uh, some information there and hopefully uh, helped you look at your gold mine areas and key areas that you can invest into when, when building a HMO portfolio. If you do have any questions, I'm happy to answer any now or alternatively, if you want to email any or you'd like further information, if you want to email over to philip.hughes at source.co, uh, Philip would be more than happy to help uh, any queries or questions. I can see there's a uh, question just popped in. Manchester's so big. Um, so do you have any specific boroughs that give better potential for HMOs? Yeah, it's a really good question, Stephen. So um, absolutely, I mean, that's part of the research that we do, the planning that we do as well. So um, what, what I'd say there in terms of, um, you, you're right, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily just say that I'm just looking at a particular borough straight away. What I would do is I'd kind of cast my net. If Manchester was the area I'm, I'm really interested in, 
I cast my net to the all the boroughs to see what returns. What what you know if you if you're utilising our our network as an example, then you know what sort of HMOs and opportunities are our franchisees passing back to you. Um, a really good example of that is um, one of our mentors, Mark uh, Franchisee. He's he's currently doing a conversion in Eccles, part of Manchester. Um, he's converting that to a six bed HMO. Uh, it's a great location. He's looking to sell that, so that would be one that we'd introduce to you. Um, high yield, high return, you know, and then looking how does that fit into your plan and, and work with you. Um, so yeah, it's a good question. Another thing, another point I'd say on that, if you do want to go down you know, a specific borough. The likes of um, things like um, property data, you know, where you can actually go on and look at those boroughs. You can go on and type a postcode in and get that data. So that would help you make any decisions. So hopefully that's helped. Um, I can see a couple more just popped in. So yeah, Jen, um, do, you, do you deal with uh, mindset? Um, yeah, so a lot of what we do in terms of, um, you know, the, the training support, um, we, we're there to support you as well. So every plan is individual to the, the the individual franchisee. So it's not a case where we say, look, this is the template and you have to take this. But yeah, I mean, probably, let, let's be honest, if you're sourcing properties or building a portfolio, it's quite a lonely place to be quite often. So, you know, that's really where a franchise comes into play because you've got the team at head office, you've got the local mentors, you've got the network support, we run regular events, um, you know, and then you've got the, the follow-up support guys as well. So, you know, it's about, it's about being part of a team, all having the shared goal and shared vision uh, and working together. Um, is the initial £12,500 plus fat the only fee? It's a one-off fee that you pay up front. Yeah. Um, how do you differ from other training companies offering Mastermind? I, th I think in terms of how we differ, again, this comes back to the, I don't really class us as a training company, um, although obviously training is, is a key element of what we do. Well, let, let's be honest. Um, you could do training, sat in a classroom, learn about HMOs. When you go out to apply that, you know, there are different things that you need. The first thing is that you need the properties. So being part of our network, you get access to the properties 24 hours before anybody else. Um, you might need funding. We've got our own funding arm, so we provide funding up to 100% on deals. Um, you may need um, support. So, you know, whether it's mindset or whether it's understanding technicalities or structures uh, and all that's there, it's about having all these resources to help you uh, achieve your goals with, with, the, with the property side of it. Uh, another one, um, personalized investing service. Yeah, so a question is coming about personalized investing service. Absolutely, we do. So, you know, if you wanted to just buy property, um, you can register on our website. We sell about 50 properties per week. Um, what we're trying to explain is that the difference here is that as a HMO partner, um, you're given access to those properties earlier. So you ultimately cherry pick. So what you've got to view way up then is, okay, you know, if I can cherry pick the deals and I can get a deal that's off market and a better deal, save over 12 and a half thousand pounds, is that worth it? And I've got all the additional resources and support and funding, et cetera. And that's what most people kind of levy their, their decision on. Um, Another question come in, would you help build a plan around a particular cities in the north if I want to invest on UK? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, that, that's exactly what we do. So uh, we would sit and look at your plan in terms of um, what you're looking to achieve, the timescales, the goals, et cetera. And we also look at the areas. Um, you know, we look at, do you want to build it locally to you or is it particular areas you want to do it? We do try and pe explain to people, look, have an open mind, treat it as a business. It's quite important. Um but yeah, ultimately, um, one of the things that I think you would get real benefit from is the fact that we don't just um, discuss this plan and then leave it. You know, we're going to introduce properties to you and then we will then discuss with you the benefits of those areas. You know, so if you're looking at capital growth and we our network have sent properties over to you, we'll then talk about the areas and how they fit in with the capital growth of the plan. Um, so, so that's quite a key one. Um, what about investing in HMOs in Wales? Uh, good question. So, yeah, we've actually got a franchisee who's just bought two HMOs in Wales. So, um, yeah, good market, great return, you know, fantastic yields on them. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, uh, definitely want to, to consider. Um, I think I've answered all the questions. So some really good questions there, guys. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate everyone's time um, today. I'm sorry it was a little bit slow at the setup. A uh, couple of problems with the microphone, but we got there in the end. Uh, as I say, any more questions? please feel free to contact us on email or give us a call at the office. We're more than happy to help uh, and have a great day. Thank you.